this is the fourth video on differential equations so in this video uh, we will see discuss about the general formula for first order linear differential equation okay now uh, for a first order linear uh, differential equation this uh, dy upon dt and y must be of first degree and no product of y into dy may occur okay so we should have this derivative of uh, uh, this should be a first degree and this y should be also a first degree and there should not be any uh, multiplication between this y and dy upon dt okay for such an equation we write it uh, usually like this dy upon dt plus vy is equal to z where this v and z may be the constants or at times they may be the functions of time okay now the formula for general solution for this differential equation to have a general solution we have used this very formula that is yt is equal to e to the power minus integral of v dt bracket uh, we have this a what we call the arbitrary constant plus the integral of z into e uh, raised power integral of v dt with respect to dt okay this a denotes our arbitrary constant and solution is composed of two parts okay we have solution in two parts that is this e to the power minus uh, this very thing this very thing what we call the complementary function and when we multiply this thing with this thing we get uh, this e to the power minus uh, e to the power minus integral of v dt uh, into integral of z e to the power integral of v dt with respect to dt and this is called the particular integral okay now this particular integral uh, this particular uh, integral equals our intertemporal equilibrium level of yt okay and uh, this complementary function what we denoted by yc represents the deviation from this equilibrium okay so this denotes our deviation from this particular integral okay for this equation so for this yt uh, to be dynamically as uh, stable yc what we call this complementary function must approach to zero so this all stuff should equal to zero as t approaches to infinity okay or when t approaches to infinity this whole what we call complementary function equals zero okay so let's uh, give an example what is meant by all this stuff let us say we have a differential equation of uh, like this we have uh, let me write it here dy upon dt uh, plus 4y is equal to 12 okay so this is our first order linear differential equation we have dy upon dt derivative and this y of first order and first degree and there is no multiplication between y and dy upon dt okay here you can see this 4 is our z sorry this is our v and this is our z now what we need to do we just use this very formula to get uh, to get the formula here so we just use this very formula let me use another color so our yt let me write it here yt will be equal to so we have the formula here so we have e uh, to the power minus the integral of v dt in place of v we have 4 i can write it like this 4 dt okay then we have this bracket we have a uh, plus again we have the integral and now we have z so in place of z we have 12 then we have e raised power integral of again v dt that means 4 4 dt with respect to dt okay so we just use this very formula here now uh, let us try to solve this out okay now let us see what is this integral of 4 dt so what is integral of 4 d you know when we integrate uh, 4 with respect to dt we will get only 4 t 
plus c okay this is from the law of integration the integral of 4 will be 40 plus we add the constant of integration okay now uh, you can see here uh, when we use this very formula uh, actually this very formula this c which is the constant uh, will be subsumed uh, with in this arbitrary constant okay so we can always add this c in this arbitrary constant okay so we will not use this c because this c will be absorbed in this uh, um, arbitrary constant okay so how can we write uh, this step we can write it like this yt is equal to we have e then we have minus now integral of 4 dt we have calculated it as 40 so i can write only minus 4 t okay so we have just subsumed absorbed the c in this uh, arbitrary constant okay then we have uh, this bracket we have this a uh, plus integral of 12 e to the power this stuff which we got here that is 40 again 40 and with respect to dt obviously so let us uh, integrate the remaining uh, stuff here so we have this integral here so i can let's uh, write it here so integral of uh, uh, 12 e to the power 4 t dt what is the integral of this simple thing we have 12 added as it is now integral of e to the power 40 is e to the power 40 okay upon 4 okay this is the integral of if we have e to the power nx okay it is uh, integral will be e to the power nx upon n okay you know this very stuff what is uh, the integral of an exponential function so we have here four ones are four threes are so we will get here uh, three e to the power 40 okay uh, plus the constant of integration which we use here okay and same logic here since we have already an arbitrary uh, constant here we can subsume this c into this arbitrary constant okay so this will be absorbed in this uh, arbitrary constant so we will not use this c here okay so what will be our yt so our yt uh, yt will be equal to so we have e to the power e to the power minus 4d then we have a and integral of this very stuff we got here now we got uh, this uh, 3 e to the power 40 okay <laughs> so uh, let us uh, multiply this uh, e to the power minus 40 to each of these terms so we will get a e to the power minus 40 okay plus we have uh, 3 e to the power um, this 40 and we have this e to the power minus 4 t here okay now uh, you can see here uh, this e to the power of 40 e to the power minus 40 it will be equal to uh, zero because we have uh, I hope you know what I mean here so this will be e to the power of 40 bases are same exponents can be added so we have 40 minus 40 okay so this will become e to the power 0 and anything raised power 0 uh, is equal to 1 okay so we get here e to the power 0 equal to 1 so this stuff will be 1 so what we got here we got a uh, e to the power minus 4 t plus 3 okay now uh, as i have told you this part this part is called the complementary function and this part is called 
the particular sorry the particular integral okay now for this yt to be dynamically stable okay our this uh, complementary yc complementary function must approach zero as t approaches to infinity okay that means this term should be equal to zero so i can write it like this for uh, what i mean for dynamically stable equilibrium okay so uh, writing this very stuff here so i can write it like this in this part so why do i write in this part i am talking about as as our t approaches to so okay as our t approaches to infinity okay then what is our this yc so yc that is our complementary function is equal to so this will become a e to the power minus 40 it should approach to zero okay and this yt should ap approach to yc okay let me write it here uh, to make the things clear here this is our what we call yp this very function is our yp okay and this will be also yp obviously and this is our yc okay so as t in this uh, e to the power minus 40 approaches to infinity uh, our complementary function should approach to zero okay and this yt will approach to the particular integral that means and yt will approach yt uh, will approach let me write it here approaches uh, that means our yp is equal to 3 okay what we call the intertemporal equilibrium level that means our yt is dynamically stable because we got this very step equal to zero now let us uh, give an idea how this term becomes zero or approaches zero as t uh, uh, approaches infinity here okay so we have e to the power let us concentrate on this very term we have minus for we say that t approach to infinity let us write it as infinity here in place of t so it, this is e to the power minus 4 infinity and it can be written as 1 upon e to the power 4 infinity okay when we multiply 4 with infinity so you can see here we have we can write it like this so e is 2.71 uh, something like this i am not able to recount there correct uh, value of the exponential function so we have 2.74 times infinity let us say it is infinity that means when we multiply here uh, 2.71 infinite number of times so our denominator will become very large okay so it will become very large and when we have one upon very large very very large denominator it will be equal to zero okay so i'm just giving an intuition here uh, this probably may not be the right thing but i was just trying to show make uh, this very thing uh, clear to you how this e to the power minus 40 uh, will approach uh, to zero as this t tends to infinity okay i hope i make my myself clear in this video so if you like this video please share with your friends that will be only motivation for me to keep going on okay thank you